in this video um, I'm going to explain how I've managed to add builds to Team Foundation Server 2010 so that I can actually assign a build to a test plan in uh, Microsoft uh, Test Manager 2010. The reason for doing this is for numerous reasons. Uh, it's for reporting to see what builds went into test or even to see the number of test cases that was executed against uh, specific builds and so forth. Also when you do log defects or bugs you need to assign it to a build for later retesting. Also um, the reason for this also is um, the projects that I work on the developers use their own kind of their own third-party tools to manage builds and source uh, using um, cruise control for build management and SVN for source control but the pro the, but but the project itself the requirements are managed using team foundation server now this make put uh, testing in a bit of an awkward position now uh, just explaining what the problem is going to Microsoft test manager 2010 you go to the track uh, view and you click on the assign build you will notice there's no builds available to assign to the test plan now this is quite uh, by doing this, you have to go to Visual Studio and um, use uh, source control and the build definition to actually create the build. Um, in, for this video, I'll be using Visual Studio 2010 Express Edition. Um, notice that Team Foundation Server does not integrate into Express Edition. So I will be using Express Edition as well as Visual Studio um, Team Explorer. So first things first, since the project is not in TFS I'll have to create a dummy project going to 2010 Express Edition Visual Studio uh, create a new project just a simple console app uh, let's call it for example um, making builds for test we have the solution everything is fine here let's just save this and when you create the project um, let's make it empty in uh, test save the project you're done on this side now we have the solution available now go to Visual Studio Team Explorer uh, and you will notice that um, I've already connected to my team project go to source control the window here you will notice that there's no local path mapped yet so next move is to map the path and check in some work as well as some work items I've worked on. So go to the project, the solution that you just created in Visual Studio Express. Uh, test, there we go, there's the solution. We map this folder. Right, the project is mapped. Let's just add those files. All right, next we do the check in and we're going to create a uh, build for test so when you do this you will already have done some form of uh, test entry criteria to make sure that the build that you will be using is actually testable and that you're actually uh, using effort of the right areas for this next build so uh, I'm going to add in the comment it's for it's a build for test revision which is now the SVN revision number let's just make it 1802 and I'm going to also include some items. You can add the stories from the backlog the guys have worked on. So this is actually checked in and hopefully this will actually help out with managing the builds and what has been done. All right, now we're busy checking in. Now realize that if your project is, if the developers are still using Visual Studio, uh, uh, SVN for managing the source, they can still continue you do not have an impact on the SVN source control which is actually quite nice for them now the next uh, part is actually to create a build definition go to build definition create a new build definition and create test build um, we're going to have a manual trigger for this the workspace is stasis time uh, we're going to use a build controller we do not want to copy output files to a drop folder right the process we do not going to create um, 
just remove whatever there is. Um, maybe we should, no, sorry, sorry. Just add the solution that we've created. There's the solution. And we're going to have a configuration there. I'm going to keep the debug, um, any CPU. Okay, that's done. Next one, um, automated test. I do not have automated test. So I'm going to remove that number format. This is um, the number format that the uh, that you will be using. Uh, the project that I'm working on is release one, revision 1802. This is something that you will have to update every time a new build comes into test. Cleaning workspace, that's fine. We don't need a lot of logging. Uh, going to the next section is source control. Um, th that's fine. Next section, advanced section, um, just put the copy output to drop folder. Put that to false because there is nothing to drop out to the folder. Um, create work item on failure, we don't need that. And we can disable the tests as well. Um, and that is it. Just click save. Right click on create test build. Q new build. I'm going to put this on high priority and start queuing. And now the build process is starting to execute. In the background, the, your build controller will uh, manage this for you. And this takes about, uh, on average, about 30 seconds if, if you're lucky. Now we're just waiting for this to finish. And hopefully it's successful. Alright, we have a successful build, release 1, revision 1802. Now going back to Microsoft Test Manager, let's refresh this, there's your build number. And as you can see there's no other ones because this is the first one that we have and it's the latest. So we're going to assign this to the test plan. And that's it. Now you can actually start recording and run your tests against the build. It tells you there uh, the test will tell you there's a new build and you can actually run the test against this now start the test now we're going to log yes pass and we're quickly going to create a bug assign it to myself system info, the version it was found in, 1802, save and close. And that's it. Now you actually have test cases can run against a build number. Good luck.